The air power of the Navy. Sea power given wings. The aircraft that carry this massive striking power are a maze of electronics. Computerized, automated. So complex that a team of specialists is needed to fly them and fight them. Captain of the team is the pilot. Quarterbacking from his electronic viewing position is a different breed of flying man. Not a pilot at all. The naval flight officer. He operates radar, computers, weapon systems, navigational systems. All the black boxes and push buttons which have replaced the fluttering scarf of the red barrel. The naval flight officer calls the signals for the pilot. 12 miles to IP. Come to heading 275. Bombing systems are operational. The job of the naval flight officer is as varied as the aircraft of the Navy. Flying in attack bombers like these, he is both bombardier and navigator, responsible for this bombing attack, and for bringing the flight safely home again. In this 1600 mile an hour fighter, he runs the radar intercepts. In a patrol plane, he coordinates the anti-submarine warfare team. He might fly from carriers, surrounded by radar, in what amounts to an airborne control tower, guiding other aircraft to their targets. Or he may evaluate enemy radar and radio in an electronic warfare aircraft. The naval flight officer might also serve as navigator on any of the Navy's large multi-engine aircraft. He could be a reconnaissance systems operator checking enemy beaches. Or probing the country at supersonic speed from high altitude. Whatever his assignment, the NFO, the Naval Flight Officer, is teamed with a pilot, each a specialist in his own way. Some NFOs are Naval Academy graduates. Some are products of the Navy's ROTC programs. But the great majority are college graduates with no previous military experience men who've been carefully selected by the Navy and trained for this kind of flying career. Pensacola, Florida, cradle of naval aviation. Most naval flight officers and most Navy pilots too begin their careers here as naval aviation officer candidates. The officer candidate is oriented to the Navy and to naval aviation's position in the naval organization and in fleet operations. He is trained in leadership. He studies aviation sciences with special emphasis on aerodynamics and engineering. And he looks at the world in which he'll function as a naval officer studying international affairs. The Naval Aviation Officer Candidate is introduced to the physical environment in which he'll work. His oxygen is taken away, so he can see the effect on his coordination. He's blasted. He's dumped. He's dropped and dragged. All 
all in the interest of future survival. Graduation day here is only one step. The untrained college student of a few months earlier has received only a military veneer and some basic indoctrination. He's now commissioned an ensign of the United States Navy, but he still has a long way to go before he earns the wings of a naval flight officer. Training Squadron 10 at Pensacola is the next stop. The classroom building is named for one of the first to study the new profession at Pensacola, and one of the first to be awarded the Navy Cross. Mr. Bissell, could I have a VFR frequency, please? Yes, sir. Come to channel 10, please. And Mr. Bissell, would you give me now a VFR position report utilizing the information I have here on the board? Here, the student officer moves from generalities to specifics, the skills of the NFO. Crestview Radio, Navy, 2 November 06, over. 2 November 06, Crestview Radio, go ahead. Crestview Radio, Navy, 2 November 06, Crestview 08, 8,500, VFR, Navy Jacksonville, over. Radar and the computer, these are the basics. One job of the Naval Flight Officer today employs the use of modern airborne fire control, ballistic, and navigation computers. These computers, however, are about a thousand times faster than this demonstration. The flight portion of the training aims to give each student NFO the basic knowledge he needs for his trade and to indoctrinate him to flight. To the aileron, you want to check the aileron and the aileron tab for security. What's the aileron tab? Get your hand out of there, Bixel. Naval flight officers are not trained as pilots, but they are introduced to the problems of controlling an aircraft. Would you like to try the controls now, Bexel? Yes, sir. Okay, remember what I told you now. Try to keep your scan going. Check your instruments. Check outside the aircraft for the airplanes. Does it, Bixel? We've got a lot of sky. In the brief for this flight, Mr. Bixel, I told you that the T1A was able to perform maneuvers characteristic of a more complex aircraft. Uh, yes, sir. Are you okay back there? Uh, yes, sir. Good, ready for the next maneuver. Yes, sir. Uh, Roger, Jacksonville, Navy 2 November 1 4. Over. The student flies missions in a training device between the actual flights. In this navigation trainer, he puts his classroom theory into practice, and the instructor can introduce unexpected conditions, like a change in wind speed or direction. He can see immediately how the student reacts. You're drifting west of Crestview, Mr. Bixel. We please calculate a new wind? The student flies the route he planned in the classroom and checks his work. A radar trainer is used in the same fashion. Zero six, Roger. Radar views of air routes are fed to the trainer's scope electronically. Come left four degrees, please. 
Gradually, the student applies the knowledge he is absorbing in the classroom, planning simulated combat flights, and then carrying them through. Stand by. Initial point, five seconds. Attack heading 075. Graduation here in VT-10 represents the, the hardest part of your training that you're going When to they are ready to leave Training Squadron 10, the student officers, both Navy and Marine, have evaluated all the NFO specialties, and the instructors have evaluated the students. This has led to selection of each student for a particular naval flight officer specialty. They are ready to move on to other bases for advanced training. For some, there's further instruction in operation of electronic devices, a necessity for most NFO assignments. Those who have selected the air control field learn to track mythical enemy planes in a ground trainer, which duplicates every detail of the plane in which they'll fly. They take to the air, already knowing the aircraft's layout and instrumentation, and try the same techniques in actual flight, locating intruders and controlling interceptors. Flying classrooms carry students who have selected navigation or anti-submarine work as their specialties. Jet-propelled aircraft are rigged as classrooms too for those who operate in high-performance combat aircraft. The wings of a naval flight officer mean that the student has mastered his specialty. Now he's teamed with a pilot for type training. And they're teamed with an airplane, the exact type they'll fly later in a combat squadron. The NFO and pilot get this kind of training throughout their careers, whenever they're assigned to a new aircraft. Together, they learn every detail of each operating system in the airplane. Starting the panel. Together, they spend long hours in an operational flight trainer, its instruments simulating actual flight. Together, they learn to manage the new aircraft and all its electronics, computerized, automated, demanding men of the highest skills and technical ability to control its power. When these officers move on to an operational squadron, they'll be a trained team, ready for action. Throughout the fleet, NFOs are carrying out their assignments as part of the Navy team, calling the signals for naval air operations. Below decks in this attack carrier, teams of pilots and naval flight officers are being briefed for assignments in a coordinated strike that will require cooperation among many types of naval aircraft. Okay, gents, uh, you've had the rundown on the target, you've got the route, and how we're getting in there, a standard formation on the way down, uh, once we get ready to make the turn in to go coast in, uh, we'll pick up a standard tactical formation, get it outspread nice and wide, and I'll call my throttle setting there, and we'll make our run in. Uh, remember to keep the bird moving. had not been a lot of fire, but uh, we don't want to take any chances on it. Six intruders, all-weather attack bombers, lead the strike. In each aircraft, a naval flight officer, the bombardier navigator, calls the signals. All systems normal. Come to heading 260. Estimate feet dry, 30 minutes. Above each group of bombers, a flight of F-4 Phantom fighters stands guard. 
each carrying a radar intercept officer, another kind of NFO. Other phantoms stand by with crews aboard, on call to defend the task force against possible air attack. E-2 Hawkeyes take off to search for enemy attackers. Their radar webs under the control of NFOs called Airborne Combat Information Center officers. Echo Seco, has all interceptor data been entered? And air control officers. Affirmative, all data has been entered. On guard two are EA-3 Sky Warriors, electronic warfare aircraft, listening for telltale signals of enemy communications and radar. Each carries an NFO, an airborne electronic evaluator. Fish Eye, this is Deep Sea Zero Two. I have a racket bearing 047. Possible submarine radar. A P-3 Orion on long-range anti-submarine patrol has been alerted by the warning from the Sky Warrior. Pilot T-3, this is radar. Pilot I. TCI. Have small target bearing 146 at 21 miles. It appeared suddenly. Uh, Roger, radar. Pilot TC. Pilot I. I hold the contact, sir. Evaluate it as possible surface submarine. Suggest we take a look at it. Uh, Roger, report to fisheye. Roger, sir. You're heading to target 150. TC is the tactical airborne coordinator, a naval flight officer. He reports the contact to the flagship of an anti-submarine task group. Fish Eye, this is Bird Dog 2, over. Bird Dog 2, this is Fish Eye, over. Fish Eye, this is Bird Dog 2, investigating surface contact. Coordinates, Alpha 6, Charlie 3, Echo 5. We'll advise, Bird Dog 2 out. Target became a sinker. Last information, 150 at six miles. PC for pilot. How's your fix? Looks right on, sir. I'm putting the target on your BDHI now. Roger, prepare for sign of boy drop. Sonar boys will listen for the sounds of a submerged submarine. And will transmit them to the waiting patrol plane. Contact, loud cavitations on sonar boy number two. Pilot TC, I have a fix. Bearing 342. 2,550 yards, Santa Buoy 2, recommend Mad Run. Hey, Roger, TC. Stand by, Mad. Mad, the magnetic anomaly detector, locates a submarine by its disturbance of the Earth's magnetic field. Madman, Madman, smoke and marker away. A row of smoke pots marks the course of the submarine. The tactical coordinator now calls in a carrier-based anti-submarine aircraft. Fish Eye 1, this is Bird Dog 2, over. Bird Dog 2, Fish Eye 1, have you inside, over. Fish Eye 1, this is Bird Dog 2, can you relieve us in MAD, over. This smaller aircraft, too, carries a naval flight officer as tactical coordinator. Bird Dog 2, Fish Eye 1, roger, you are relieved, out. Shark 1 and Shark 2, this is Fish Eye 1. I have a goblin for you. Holding him down, will not attack. Vector 355, five, 8 miles, over. The airborne coordinator will now lead destroyers to the attack in the anti-submarine portion of the exercise. Meanwhile, a patrolling Hawkeye has detected an unidentified aircraft approaching. 
a bogey. Seiko Boitek, new bogey, track 0513, bearing 122, 147 miles. I have him on my scope. The E-2's Airborne Combat Information Center officer, another naval flight officer, must now decide whether the bogey is hostile or friendly. Home flight, this is 1402. Bogey track 0513, does not respond to interrogation. I have classified him hostile. He is heading at 250, speed 550. Altitude 50. Over. The Navy's F-4 Phantom Interceptor, fastest fighter in the world. A naval flight officer rides the rear seat as radar intercept officer. Fortune Hunter 2, this is Backwash 1. Airborne with two chicks for your control. Over. Backwash 1, this is Fortune Hunter 2. Vector 150. Elevator Angels 50. Over. The air control Back officer one, in the Hawkeye vectors the fighter to its target. Five, he will guide the intercept Elevator until Angels the fighter makes contact over. with its own radar. Backwash 1, weapons check. Over. This is Backwash 1, weapons sweep. Out. Backwash 1, this is Fortune Hunter 2. Bogey estimated single aircraft headed 250, indicating 0.92 Mach. Over. Backwash 1. Contact 5 right, 41. Over. This is Fortune Hunter 2. That is your bogey. Over. Backwash 1. Judy, out. Six intruders have been moving toward their targets as the task force fought off submarine and air attacks. I have the initial point. Follow steering. Roger. Steering is centered. IP 10 miles, heading to target 280. Roger, right to 280. Home plate, gun smoke 3. Feet dry, commencing bomb run.
bombs have been dropped, the mythical bombs of a maneuver, and the intruders turn toward home. Aboard the flagship, a report from Air Intelligence. Sir, we have a report from Gunsmoke 3. They broke through the Bay radar defenses and scored a direct hit on the bridge. Yes, sir, their interceptors got off, but our A6s were on their way home. naval flight officers, flying combat teams of the modern Navy. The pilots have been established, some moving up to the highest commands. Now the NFOs have found their place too, a full and varied life with sea and shore billets alternating, with experience to fit a man for both naval command and key administrative posts. The naval flight officer calling the signals for the Navy's air team. Playing on his electronic webs, the NFO guides the Navy's air power. The airmen of the future. <laughs> 